All right, here's my Geiger counter board. It's powered up and it's producing, oh, up here on the end, 460 volts. This is a surplus um, Russian Geiger tube, piece of buzzer. We'll discuss the high voltage supply in another circuit in another video. And this is a piece of radioactive glass. It's a lens loaded with thorium. It's producing alpha, beta, and gamma emissions. Place it near the tube. You hear the uh, clicks and you should be able to see the video. It's a very brief flash from that LED. That's pretty much all there is to this. The problem is with a lot of these Soviet type cheapy tubes, they do not detect alpha. And thorium is a fairly good alpha emitter, but the tube won't detect that. It's, it's detecting the secondary beta and gamma emissions. All right, that's all there is to that. We'll look at the schematic. We'll look at the schematic of the actual circuit. A couple of other issues to note, if you can see this over here. It's reading around 9 volts. I adjusted this circuit. The high voltage can be adjusted through this pot or by the input voltage to give me 400 to 460 volts to operate this particular Geiger tube. Like I said, the tube is rated 400 to 460 volts. I set it right at 460. It does a little better job. All right, another issue to note is, you saw, it's hard to see the blink on the LED. And this is why um, you can use a one-shot multivibrator that instead of getting a very brief spike, you can get a more of a nice square wave with a little more time on it so it won't be so brief and it would be easier to both see and easier to interface with a microcontroller to count the pulses. Here's a closer look at the layout of the Geiger board. Over here is the high voltage generator with these parts. Here's a voltage doubler to give me 400 to 500 volts from 170 volts or so output from the transformer. And that output voltage can be varied by changing the frequency and adjusting this pot. I'm concerned mainly here with this Russian Geiger Muller tube and the little circuitry down here. If you was using it and it was detecting radiation, you would see a brief flash on the LED. And of course, you hear a click in the piezo buzzer. Here is the actual circuitry itself. The voltage go, here's your Geiger tube, a 10 meg resistor to ground, a 47 picofarad capacitor, a 4.7 meg resistor between the capacitor and the MPSA 13 Darlington transistor. Here is your LED and its resistor, and here is the piezo speaker or piezo buzzer. This circuit operates at 9 volts. And that's all there is to this. Let's we'll explore other aspects of this. One of the things you'll notice in the video is that the blinks are hard to see on the uh, LED because the pulses are so brief. A solution to that would be a one-shot multivibrator, which we will address in a separate video, but part of this video will show you the output from a similar Geiger counter circuit 
and what it does when we send it through a one-shot multi-vibrator. What will we be looking at this time is the output from my Rad Alert 50 Geiger counter. This is taken of the actual output from the tube and I'm going to hold a radioactive source, test source, up to the device. You notice the pulses down here come directly from the tube, but I can control the output pulse width with my multi-vibrator. Uh, multi and while it might be a little hard for you to see, this creates output pulses that are easier for an Arduino or similar microcontroller to read. Let's kill the sound a bit. There we go. If you look at your pulses. And like I said, you see the Geiger counter pulses below and I control the output through the mon uh, through the monostable multi vibrator, A.K. the CD forty forty seven. So this was a good way to clean up pulses in order for your Arduino or other microcontroller to read the count from a Geiger Bowler tube.